I just got back from Rapid, the additive conference that took place in Pittsburgh last week. And while I was there, I met plenty of Fusion 360 users and saw some amazing designs. Unsurprisingly, the question I got most frequently had to do with how they could use Fusion 360 to work with STLs and mesh files. So that's what this quick tip is all about. Let's start by showing you where to get to the mesh workspace. So if you're in the history capturing mode, you'll access the mesh workspace under the create dropdown. Hitting this button will create a mesh feature in the history, and from there you can begin adding and using mesh related tools. If you prefer not to capture history, as I'm switching to here and indicated by the absence of the timeline, you'll find mesh as its own workspace. But no matter what way you access it, it'll be the same once you're there. At this point, I want to insert the example file I got while at the conference. Thanks are due to Travis for this. To bring in your STLs or OBJs, you'll select Insert Mesh from under the Create dropdown, then locate the file. As you go to insert it, we can set the scale, use automated tools to center the model, move it to ground, or you can manually transform it as well. With that done, and this place to my liking, let's inspect this mesh a little. As I zoom in, the high quality of this mesh becomes apparent. And that's typically the case. We can check the number of facets for this example by accessing the properties. And you can see it's more than three quarters of a million faces. Even though Fusion isn't struggling with it now, which still surprises me after working with tools like Scan2 3D, I know there's benefit in reducing the mesh. This is one of many modification methods provided within the mesh workspace. Using the Reduce tool, I can very aggressively cut back the number of facets without losing a high degree of resolution, thanks to the adaptive method. Here I'll reduce this number by 95% without noticeable difference. So what most people want to do when they get these into Fusion is modify them or turn them into editable solids. Let's explore a couple ways we can do this. First up is using sculpting tools. In this case, I'll drop a sculpted plane and increase the number of faces. At this point, I want to use a special tool found under Modify called Pull. What Pull will do is move selected vertices to the closest body, even mesh bodies. I'll do a box select to capture all the vertices, and that's it. As I rotate around, you can see how well this simple procedure enabled me to not only recreate the shape, but it's improved it now with the Curvature Continuous T-Splines pod. Awesome. Next up and somewhat related is a method that will eventually use the patch workspace. In this case, I want to copy the mesh shape using the sketch tool called Create Mesh Section. This will take a cross section of the mesh that I'll use later. You can very easily move the location of this to capture particular areas of your model, or better capture the cross section. I'll do this a couple more times, because the more I have, the better the results will be. In some cases, like the back piece of the saddle, it makes sense to rotate the mesh section. Now I want to further smooth these faces by using another tool found within the same submenu. Fit Curve to Mesh section will enable me to create sketch entities about those mesh sections. Just select the command, then the mesh section, and you'll be taken to the sketch environment. Now I'll use various lines, arcs, splines, and other shapes to recreate the geometry. As I do this, I'll drop a number of points, because again, the more I add, the better my results will be. Because I want to turn this into a loft later, I'll try to ensure that for each section I do this, I have a similar number of points. Skipping ahead after some repetitions, and I'm ready to turn these into a loft. I'll access the command, turn on chain selection, as that'll see me from having to select every sketch entity, and just a couple clicks later, I'll have another smooth representation of that mesh data. Further to that, I can adjust tangency weights, takeoff angles, and so on. From there, I can use the Thicken command found under Create to turn this into a solid. This same command could have been used to thicken the T-Spine's body, or other patch methods can be used in the event Thicken struggles. The last method will require I use Autodesk Remake, formerly Memento. Using this in conjunction to Fusion will add additional tools to your mesh arsenal, and can even convert photos into high-def 3D meshes. I'll use it for one simple operation, however, to convert the SDL into an OBJ with quads. Once it's finished exporting, which took much longer than I show here. I'll bring it back into Fusion using the method shown before. Now, because it's an OBJ with quads, I can use the Convert tool within T-Splines to turn this mesh into a T-Splines body. This T-Splines body can be manipulated with the Modify tool as you would with any sculpted body. The scan came in almost perfect, but there was one opening. On the back face here, I'll use a fill hole to patch it up. And once I do, it's now a solid. A quick section analysis will verify this. Anyway, I hope that helps answer some questions you might have. Stay tuned, we're always adding more to this and every workspace.